produced by Podcast Architects. Welcome back to the Path Forward special TASA Midwinter edition here in Austin. I'm joined by a friend of the program and Chief Strategy Officer from Parent Square, Chad Stevens. Chad, welcome to the show. Yeah, glad to be back. So now, are you are you happy about the weather? I know you live in Chicago area, the <laughs> Chicago area, so this has to be a little bit warmer. It is. It, it is. It was uh, a pretty pretty good dose of snow on the ground and ice when I left Chicago yesterday. So I'm always happy to be back down in uh, Texas. You guys can keep all of that y'all's way. We don't need any of that down here. Um, so for our, our viewers and our listeners that are not familiar with Parent Square, give us a synopsis that thirty thousand foot view of how you serve schools. Yeah, the 30,000 foot view, we take it. All your parent communication, um, all of your family engagement tools, we put those into one iOS and Android app, give parents a ton of choice and really make it easy for schools and parents so that they're just one place to communicate so you can be you know, on brand, but also you know, make sure you're getting the right messages out and um, staying ahead of things. So for, for a parent like me that I feel like I'm pretty in tune to what my kids are doing in school, but there are like 30 different communication vehicles that I have to Correct. decipher. And you guys are simplifying that process. Right. You have an amazing technology team. Um, when you think about all the integrations we do, that's right. Parents go to one place. They know that's the one place they go. They get uh, text, app notification, phone calls, um, and all the, you know, it, it makes it easy on parents. So we always like to say, you know, Communicating with your school should be like buying a cup of coffee. You you go to the app, you pick your teacher, you pick the counselor, you pick the, whoever it is, the superintendent, and it's right there at your fingertips, and you're able to get to it. And then we translate all that into over a hundred hundreds of languages so that everybody has really equitable access. They're seeing things in their native language. Um, it kind of brings them into the school community. You know, you guys had me when you told me I could electronically signed permission slip. That's all I needed to hear right there. Like that docu sign. That's definitely a killer one. Like sold, like sign me up right there. Yeah, that's um, a good one. Now you guys have some exciting news to share. So I want to give you an opportunity to, to tell us what's going on. Yeah, we're super excited. Um, last week at the Future of Education Technology Conference in New Orleans, um, we launched Parascore Smart Sites. Um, we acquired a company named Gabbert Communications, which I think a lot of our um, uh, TSA customers are probably familiar with out of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. We required them in November, and we've been working behind the scenes to do a lot of integrations. We launched that on Monday, and so we're we're excited to bring that to the market. And we've already actually had a couple schools come by and check it out, and and I think it kind of closes the loop for us um, in terms of every single piece of communication that happens in the district. So, can you give some specific examples of what that acquisition will bring to the the user interface or the experience, if you will? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you can. You know, the same type of innovation that we brought to communication space to make it more family engagement with all the school services and all the things that are in it. You know, before Parents Square, really a lot of um, comms tools were, were just that. They were one-way megaphone, right. what's happening. Blasts, right. right. Blast and not two-way communication. So you can expect that same type of innovation from our team with smart sites. So the way we think about it is, um, you know, tr traditionally websites, um, they can be kind of stagnant. They can not be as active. So if you're using our app, you're engaging with your families, your website should be great. We also think that websites, you know, really need to be, you know, they need to come to parents where they are. Right. So, you know, you get all, you, you've all heard this for, hey, hey, you know, mom or dad, go out to the website, download the student handbook, right. sign it and send it back to us. Well, why do you need to do that when you could just say, hey, the student handbooks are in your app. Open it up, sign it we're good, right? Like really bringing everything to the parents, going and get the parents where they are. And so we, we think, you know, obviously there's other, other innovations that we're working on down the road as, as we go through the acquisition. We just, we just finalized it in November, but we're really excited about really just bringing some disruption. And I guess overall, you know, um, one of the things we really thought about was family engagement, true family engagement with all the data, and we can talk about data later, and I know you enjoyed that part. Absolutely. Uh, but like true family engagement with all the data plus a website is really, um, we think really going to be a great tool as compared to um, really a legacy website type of situation that tried to add communications, right? Yeah. We feel a little bit of a one plus one equals three scenario as we, we pull all that in. So we're super excited. So could you envision 
this this new technology or this new way of thinking about engagement could that replace that first day folder that first week folder where your kid comes home and there's a backpack and there's like <laughs> 700 forms in there and, and i'm guilty right as a former principal we stuffed them too right so yeah i did too we, we send them home to the parents and yeah, parents are like stock, green car stock pink car stock <laughs> black blue car stock yeah uh, you know a small amazon rainforest <laughs> lost during that first week of school is do you envision this technology kind of replacing those antiquated systems yeah i mean we think that we're well on the way to bringing just about everything that touches a parent into into their onto their phone wherever they're at and so yeah i think that would be a great use case i mean today as a reminder parent square does forms or permissions we have students that are schools that are using that today right like registration and things like that so yeah i mean certainly you know you want parents to come in but um you want to make it easy on them so if that lands on their their device that's a that's a great way to do it so that might be a good example so from the school side of things how are you guys helping administrators and teachers? I got to imagine that the volume that they're receiving has probably gone up, uh, not only, you know, in, in the recent, uh, you know, COVID right. and all the things that are happening around the country with schools, but even with something so transparent like you guys provide, I'm assuming that teachers are going to get more communication than they probably ever have. Administrators right. may get a little bit more. So how do you help prepare them for that, Right. right. Well, on the teacher side, if you go into smart sites, I mean, one of the things that we're really trying to be really, um, you know, really thoughtful about is as a teacher, you already have a lot of stuff going on in your life, right? So the idea is that if you're communicating with your parents and engaging them the way you should be, you shouldn't have to worry about a teacher website. Right. Like you shouldn't have one more stress as a teacher of, oh gosh, my website's not up to date. If you think about it, you're going on a field trip, you are you have this, you know, and all that just lands there. Of course, the, the parent can go to, Parent score smart sites, pull that up, see all the communications, see all the forms that went out before. Really, it, it's a, you know, that's what our app did, did already. Sure. I think on the backside, you know, and we've talked about it before, there's a lot of data on our dashboard. So the first thing you see when you log into Parent Square and then you go to the data dashboard is your contactability. So really looking at what type of content are parents, is parents engaging with? Mm -hmm. um, what, 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 are they, what do they like and appreciate? Um, what are they not opening? Like, what are they saying? So like, you know, over time, you know, we, we feel like, you know, we, this is not rocket science. We know that, um, it's very overwhelming. You talked about at the beginning oh, of the yeah. podcast, right? Like we all have a folder on our phone of all the different ways the, the, the school, um, you know, tries to communicate with us, but there's also like 50 years of research from Harvard and Columbia and all kinds of places that says family engagement is a better indicator of almost anything on student success. So if we can make it where parents are less overwhelmed and they're really getting just the information they need to make sure that they're very engaged with their child's education, we also think there's a plus side on the, on the st student success, attendance, all, all those types of things. Um, so, so we're excited about that piece. Yeah, I would think that you know, as a school district, it, the opportunity to share some of the great things that are happening. And we try, uh, you know, bless our hearts, we try, but we don't always do a good job of that. We're often reactive. Something happens and whether right. we're in damage control, we're putting out fires. It would be great to have a, a one-stop engagement shop, if you will, right? to be able to to put that in there for from the classroom, from the school, from the school district, and sure. and it be you know it's getting received and the good news is getting out even all the way down to a, to a child's success right they did a great on a test right hey you know little Ricky finally got uh, <laughs> finally got that that B he's been little, striving for yeah little Ricky finally got it. and and I I think there's a you know a, a flip side of this really is um, the equity piece right, right. so. You know, we, we get this a lot. In fact, I, I, I talked to a school last week out in um, Louisiana, and they they came by our booth, and they're like, yeah, well, our families are really already engaged. And and my question was, well, well, how do you know? Right. Like, what what data says that? And, yeah, yeah I understand that there's 60, 70, 80 percent that's highly engaged, but what about the 20 percent of families or maybe the 2 percent of families that speak a different language right. outside of Spanish and some of the other languages that you see here in Texas that have never in their life seen a permission slip in their native language, never ever been connected to their school and, and ever felt connected. Like, so yeah, there is engagement and there's family engagement, but there's also 
reaching all your families and that goal. We, we recently had a school district in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts that put out a tweet, it was last week, and it was very transparent, it said we can now reach 99.8% of our families. Think about how powerful that is for a superintendent. Absolutely. That's pretty, pretty impressive. So it's exciting. Um, you know, we just think that the, you know, we're about family engagement. So the, the, the smart sites piece is really just adding to that puzzle to make sure that all families are getting, you know, getting everything um, in one spot. So we're really excited to sh show it off here at TASA. Now, in, you, you, make, you bring up a good point about the equity because often the, the students and the families that are not engaged uh, tend to be the ones that are either struggling academically or struggling social emotional wellness. Right. Uh, so to, to have a conduit to them to bring them into the community of the school, that that's hugely important. We're always, I mean, you know, we're always trying to figure out how do we reach that group? How do we help right. this group? Um, how do we get them to events, you know, tutorials, enrichment, all those different things. Yeah. And you, you're starting to see more and more like um, family, like I just talked to one this morning, a family engagement coordinator, that's her job. And so they're sitting here in their office going, well, this family doesn't look engaged. I need to reach out to them. But you know, they um, speak Mandarin. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, in our tool, you just pull up your computer or your phone and you shoot them a message. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you start to get a dialogue going and you figure out how you can help them. So I think that piece is really exciting. Um, you know, I think the, the team does an amazing job with that technology to, to get it to where it's at. And it's, you know, it's real time. And, um, you know, we think that's another kind of position in the district that the tools really start to help a lot. What, who... Can you give me a district that you think is using Parent Square to its fullest potential? Is there one that stands out <laughs> like these? Oh, man. This group is a rock star. I don't know if I want to pick any oh, okay. favorites on my customers. All right. No, <laughs> no, I mean, I would go back to our last podcast. Yeah, Hutto. Uh, you look at Hutto. Yeah, and, shout out to Selena and her yeah, team. Yeah, Selena and her team. And um, Noel is a, a new member of our Parent Square Advisory Council. I think they're doing a really good job. And I think. I, I guess the reason why I would call them out, we have a lot of amazing customers. Um, the, the reason why I call them out in Texas is one, um, they just adopted Parent Square not too long ago, right? So to, to, to see what they've done in a very short amount of time um, with a, a, a technology be that impactful to the district is, that's, that's, you, both, you and I were both in administration, that doesn't happen very often, right? Yep. There's always a lot of implementation and da 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 and training, you know, because it really looks like a, social media interface it's like this is how it works typically teachers are they're moving really fast with the tools so i think they've done a really amazing job of um you know using their data getting in touch with their parents and really there's a lot of customers um in that area um that have been impacted in, in a good in a good way right, right. i know it's, it's always a joke about how much growth there is out, out here around austin right but you know like you know i grew up in texas so Hutto, Taylor, those, those types of areas, those, those, you know, you know, I never envisioned there would be Tesla plants and Samsung chip factories and all these things, right? So you have to be able to adapt and, you know, it's really uh, gratifying as a team to, to be able to build a tool that helps address some of those things in a very fast way. Cause when I first met them, um, you know, they didn't have an app. They did, they weren't even really digital, right? So to move them into that digital world with parents that fast is, is really cool. You know, um, con thinking about the, the evolution of school districts and growth, you know, I always think that the, one of the biggest challenges that we don't do a good job with is how, how we handle the acceleration of change, right? I mean, change in general yeah. is problematic enough, uh, and I have learned that the hard way on multiple occasions. But now we're in a, we're in a time that not only is it change, but it's the acceleration of how quickly things are changing. And our ability as schools to adapt, you know, you got these big, huge uh, organizations that you're trying to change habits or change how we do things, and it, it doesn't happen overnight. How do we get on board with how fast things are yeah. changing, you know? I, I love that topic. Um, you know, having spent five years of my career at Amazon um, building a business, um, you know, the, the, the one thing I would take away from that that was a little different than schools that might help superintendents is, is really this concept of um, two-way door decisions, right? So, so most decisions have, a, have or you want to make two-way door decisions. In other words, you want to make decisions that are fast right. and reversible. And I found that a lot of times when I was in the school district, 
um, it was different, right? It was more like, let's put together a committee. Let's make this decision. Let's measure, you know, 50 times a cut once. And I, and I get that, right? right? But in the world that, in the world that we're in, sometimes you have to, um, experiment a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And, and to be honest, like in, in the time that I've been out in private sector, I've seen schools getting a lot better than this, but I, I think, you know, having a tool like Parent Square that helps build trust in your community also allows you to have an experiment and then maybe fail and then be able to be transparent and get it, be like, Hey, we tried this and it didn't work type of thing. I, I, I get it. I was a school finance. That's what my doctor, my dissertation's on. Like I get the money part, sure. You know, the contract part and all that, but I, I don't, I don't see it necessarily as with companies. It's just like in what you do in the school district. So the ability to kind of say to reverse a decision is really helpful. And I think if you, if, if a school kind of has that mindset, it'll help them uh, help them adapt. And the other thing I've always told schools is like, you know, if you look at some of the big, you know, the big innovative evolutionary things that happen in schools, mm -hmm. um, let's, you know, let's take like, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll use my Google classroom in 2013, which is not even a decade ago. Right. I believe there was that, that that's, I know because I was out in Mountain View County of Warrior talking to the team at like three people because we were going to partner with them when I was at CGW. Think about that. Yeah. There was no Google yeah. Classroom, right? So, and I would say most people that were early adopters of that and were ahead are happy with how far their teachers are ahead with that tool, right? Not to do something, you know, for, for that. But like you take about cloud technologies, AWS, where I worked, most companies that adopted that early, like ParentSquare, are happy because right. they got out of data centers. And so I think sometimes that risk taking and moving forward is just something that, you know, has to get like in the DNA of a, of a school. So, uh, it's, it's challenging, but you know, try something new. And, um, we feel like, you know, we do get put in that box a lot at parents square of, Hey, well, you know, there's the comms company. No, we're a family engagement company. And we feel like in a lot of ways, we're hopefully, um, making that better for a lot of people. There'll be other players that come in the market and try to do amazing family engagement things and try to catch up with us. Which is, which is great, right? Because sure. it's better for kids. Push, and it pushes you guys. Yeah, it pushes us. And there's 50 million kids. So what I want is 50 million. Like our, the mission of student success for Parent Square, of course, we, we, we love our customers and we want to be in many. But at the end of the day, I want 50 million kids in the United States to have awesome family engagement. Absolutely. And so like if we keep pushing the envelope of family engagement, it's going to get better and better. Like that's going to increase student success. That's good for society. It's good for the economy. I and mean, we could probably go down a ton of crazy roads yeah. that, that we probably don't have time for here, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really great. So. so, okay. Let me change the, change the, uh, the topic real quick. What are the buttons, the favorite buttons that teachers have? So let me ask you, if I'm a teacher and I have parent square, can I, can I block a crazy parent? <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I, can I unfollow them or can they unfollow me? Do I get to kick off? No, I don't think, Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say the one thing that is nice is when you create a post in Parent Square that goes out like district wide, um, you know, there's comments on the post, but mm -hmm. the comments aren't, the comments only go back to the poster. Right. So you can't, you don't get all the crazy uh, yeah. comment stuff. So we have seen a lot of schools get off of, um, from for some announcements, get off of social media. Right. Because they can, you get beat up. Thing. Yeah. You get and, beat and up. Parent comments, you can just comment to them directly and, and create individual right. situations. Let's have that discussion yeah. offline. Yeah. yeah. Not not in the public forum. So our schools appreciate that. All right, Chad, before I let you go, if a school district is interested in getting in touch with parents where to learn more, give us the details. How do they do it? For sure. So I think the one thing here for our uh, TASA midwinter is just go to parentsquare.com slash texas so if you're a texas customer that'll give you a unique experience where you can see everything that we're that we have going on in texas obviously if you want to look at other things uh, you can you can go out to parentsquare.com we're at parentsquare on twitter um i'm at k12 cto on twitter if you want to find me and then i would just say on the smart sites piece you can go to parentsquare.com slash gabbert or gabbert.com slash parentsquare <laughs> and get all that information which is all the same and then come by we have two booths here because of the acquisition. So one's on the 100 row and one's on the 1400 row if you're around and you hear this and you have to still be here, so. I was just gonna put your cell number in the in the, <laughs> in the description. I'm not, yeah. I mean, that's what I was gonna do, but, <laughs> but you, gave, you gave us a lot of opportunity. Yeah, for sure. we're not hard to find. Now, we appreciate you joining the show and we look to the great things that are happening for Parent Square. Yeah, thanks, Rick.
produced by Podcast Architects.